Hello. So today I want to talk about hell. Um, breaking down the parts of that, the construct, the realities, the delusions, and all of that stuff. So let's start off with the simple part. Do I believe that hell is real? Uh, yes. Do I believe that um, what people think of when they think of hell is real? Absolutely not. I believe that um, hell as it is presented today is false. It's fake. It's made up. But the four individual parts that make up this construct are real. Um, and throughout this video, I'll go through those four parts in detail. Um, feel free to fact check me if you want. Um, but let's just say that the four parts are Gehenna, uh, the land of the dead or the underworld. There is the lake of fire. And there is just the uh, darker, lower part of the spirit world. So I'll break those down um, in whatever order this this flows. <laughs> so starting off with Gehenna, which is one of my favorites to talk about. Gehenna is a very physical location. It is a geographical location on Earth that can be found uh, in Jerusalem. <laughs> it is a literal location on Earth that got lumped into the mix when people talked about hell. Now, some of the characteristics of Gehenna was that there was a place where they uh, kept a fire going. There was this large fire, they kept it burning. It was a landfill. That was a place where they went and dumped all of their trash to dispose of it. They took their trash and they throw it into the fire. Um, so that this is the place where the worm and the eater and the fire that never stopped. It's a very literal place on earth that you can visit. Um, this is also a place where Moloch worshippers would go to uh, sacrifice children, sacrifice babies, which eventually became, uh, well, including Moloch worship is also where we get the concept of how people celebrate Christmas today. But this isn't a Christmas video, so I'll leave that alone till December. But it was a it was a landfill, it was a dump. So when the scriptures were warning them, the people of that day, about this upcoming purge, this upcoming persecution, this upcoming uh, event, it was a very literal prophecy for the people in that time to be on the lookout for something that was going to happen within the next 40 years which was the Siege of Jerusalem, which happened in, I believe, 70 AD. Um, and this is why you look at the scriptures, it was only present in the letters written for Jews, not to Gentiles, because this was pretty much the first instance of a Holocaust in which the Roman government uh, went through Jerusalem and they rounded up all of the Jews and they threw them into the fire in Gehenna. This was a very literal thing that they, that they were being warned about. You can research it. You can look it up. These events played out. And this is actually where a lot of end time theology falls short because most of the things that they were being warned about in their day happened in their day. This isn't something that was supposed to come 2,000 years later. No other prophecy was really set that way. This is something that very literally happened Let's say the ministry of Yeshua was, uh, let's say it ended around 33 AD. 40 years later is when the fulfillment of that came about, where they very literally were rounding people up and throwing them into fire. And it was said for them to run to the hills of Judea and those who made it would be safe. It was a, somewhat of a city of refuge. But this is a very literal thing which gets lumped into the depiction of uh, hell as we know it. This great roundup and people being thrown into fire and it's eternal. The fire never stops and there's worm and there's decay. It's, it's very literally a landfill. And it's an event that already happened. You can research it. You can study all about it. It happened already. So then let's get into Sheol. Or hell. So the word hell itself actually just means land of the dead. Sheol, hell, means the same thing. It's the underworld. It's the land of the dead. It's the place where people go when they die. 
that's all it represents. Um, on its own, that's all it means. So when Yeshua was preaching about hell and promising people freedom from hell, he wasn't talking about freeing them from this torture place. He was talking about setting them free from having to get in a grave and having to go to the land of the dead because his ministry was all about life. Um, but that's a simple one. Hell, Sheol, Underworld, same thing. It's just talking about the land of the dead. Now, one of my other favorites, probably is my favorite to talk about um, in this topic, is the Lake of Fire. And this is one of the grossest deceptions that I've seen happen that found its way into most people's psyche. And that's just that Lake of Fire is, uh, isn't necessarily accurate for what's being described. The verbiage being used in the descriptions of the Lake of Fire in the original language, what they were intentionally trying to portray wasn't a scene of torture. They were using descriptive imagery to paint a picture about something that the workers of the day would recognize. Now, anyone who does metalwork, welding, uh, maybe they build, maybe they uh, make jewelry or something like that, uh, any type of metalwork might be familiar with these terms, but Lake of Fire isn't necessarily accurate, but Refiner's Crucible is. Now, the Lake of Fire scenery wasn't, again, portraying this image of torture. It was portraying this uh, illustration of metallurgy in which it was describing the process of purifying precious metals, in this instance, gold. So what they would do is they would take the gold, they would put it into a crucible. A crucible is like a pot. And they would superheat it while it was in there, melt it down, and they would throw salt and they would throw sulfur. There goes your fire and your brimstone. In order to extract the impurities out of the gold. It was all about purifying that which was precious by fire. Using... Uh, metal urgy as a reference it's not about torture it's about purity so the refiner's crucible the refiner's fire was all about taking something valuable that has impurities and purifying it getting rid of all of the impurities and even the idea of an eternal burning place didn't exist until augustine because eternal isn't actually used in that in that scripture in the original language. The verbiage used is age of ages, which means as long as it takes. So it's the process of purifying until that thing is pure. Not the process of torturing something forever and ever and ever and ever and always. Because uh, it made a mistake or something like that. It's all about purifying that which is precious restoring something this is repentance this is restoration this is rejuvenation so uh that's one that's one of the big things is that even the idea of oh hell is hot is fake the lake of fire isn't meant to torture you we look back at isaiah in the year that king Uzziah died he saw the lord he was high and lifted up skip 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 you get to the part where the Lord calls him to ministry, tells him to go speak, and he says, but my mouth is unclean. And then the seraphim take fiery coals from the altar, and they touch it to his lips, and then his mouth is clean. Fire in the kingdom is used to clean, not to torture. Even the word torment that's in our English translations is a very direct mistranslation. The word torment doesn't exist there. The word used is touchstone. What is a touchstone? A touchstone is something that was used to strike the precious metal against so that they could test its purity. It's to test the purity, not to torture. <laughs> because it's all about seeing, okay, when this gold is pure, it's done. It can get out the fire, no more salt, no more brimstone, it's over. It's a bath. So the lake of fire experience is a bath, which even correlates to the temple structure in that there's the brazen altar 
that is also the lake of fire. Now, this is built into you as the temple. The temple that you are comes equipped with its own lake of fire, its own refiner's crucible that exists in the outer court. I'll do a video on this soon. I'm going to be teaching on this if y'all come to my meeting uh, Saturday in Orange. I've been posting it. Check the community channel. <laughs> it's on all the social media, but... Um, I'll probably be doing a video on that topic again. It's been a while since I went over the temple structure and I have a lot more to say on that. So coming soon, but the brazen altar is present within you for your use. It's for your purification, which means that you carry the technology within yourself to purify yourself. It's built in. The lake of fire was never meant to torture you. It was never meant to punish you. It's meant to clean you, to refine you, to purify you, to keep you clean, to help you get clean should you find yourself impure. And that's built into us. It's a technology that's built into what we are. Now, you even think back to the work of Yeshua. Uh, John the Baptist said that the one that's coming after me will baptize you in the spirit and will baptize you in fire. People get lazy today and they say the fire of the Holy Spirit. Those are two different baptisms. One is to change you genetically. The other <laughs> is to purify you. And he says that he's going to baptize the entire world in fire. Does that mean that the entire world is going to burst into flames and that's it for the earth? It's scorched to a crisp no more? No. He's talking about his plan for redeeming, his plan for restoring the entire world, purifying, removing the impurities from the world, all of creation being purified, not tortured, not abandoned, not destroyed, but purified. So then let's get into the last part, which is just the lower part of the spirit world. So there are three major realms that I teach on. There's the natural world, the astral or psychic world or soulish world, and then there is the spirit world. Now, good and evil exists in all three worlds. Um, think about it in the natural. You have the good side of town, you have the bad side of town, right? This exists in all three realms in that there's good places you can be on earth. There's places you probably don't want to be on earth. There's places that are safe in the astral world. There's places that aren't safe in the astral world. There's places that are within the kingdom in the spirit world, but there are places that are not a part of the kingdom that are in the spirit world. So you can think of this lower place kind of like the ghetto or the hood of the spirit world in that it's where lower spiritual beings reside and spirits who choose. It's all by choice. Everything is sorted by density where that which is alike fellowships. Birds of a feather flock together, as I've heard, and that's still the same principle. No one is uh, really being imprisoned in that way. Not in the spirit world, no. No one's really being imprisoned as punishment for not believing in Jesus Christ, and then they died, so now they get thrown where all the demons and all the other uh, people of darkness, all the other wickedness and evil and stuff exist. That, that's not real. Yes, people are there. Yes, people reside in those areas. Yes, you can see people's spirits residing in that lower darkness of the spirit world. They're not there <laughs> because they're punished and sentenced to be there. Even they're there by choice. We never lose our ability to choose, not even in the spirit world, not even in the soulish world. There's not actually a verse that says that no one can choose once they die. Your pastor told you that. Oh, it's like the Roach Motel. You go in and you don't come out. No. <laughs> I'm not that big on scripture, but even scripture doesn't talk about that. It's not there. And when I say I'm not that big on scripture, I'm just saying that scripture is secondary. At most, it's all about what you hear God say. And scripture is, it can be a useful tool, supporting material. I got an s and basics on scripture coming out soon. But, uh, yeah, 
it's a, it's just this lower region where people or, or beings of like nature choose to reside. No one is there against their will. At any moment, they can choose the kingdom if they want to. Just like even if you find yourself on Earth living in a rough area, you can move. You can move when you get ready to. When you decide to move, you'll move. And we never lose that choice. So all of those four individual parts, and if you wanted a, a, a resource that really describes this, um, I recommend Sadhu Sundar Singh's book called The Visions of the Spiritual World. Um, there is an audio book you can find on YouTube, but the actual book itself is really short. And um, this is a book from a man of God from about 100 years ago who um, got taken into the spirit world by the cloud of witnesses and they kind of walked him through and showed him how things work. And the way that he described it when I read his book was the same way that I had seen it for, for a few years. So I didn't learn about the structure of the spirit world from this book. Um, I saw it myself in my own relation, in my own engagements, um, and then found out that there was a book a hundred years ago that narrated it and illustrated it in a way similar to what I've seen. So if you want something to read on this topic, I recommend that. Um, but yeah, that's another resource, but Going again, the idea of hell as we have it today is fake. Hell is not some torture place that God's going to send you to because you didn't believe in his son. No. No. <laughs> uh, those are all four different concepts, and some of them are even meant to help you, not hurt you. The lake of fire is your best friend. <laughs> That's your help. <laughs> Uh, the land of the dead, yes, Yeshua preached against it because he was coming to offer life. Y'all know how I am about immortality. He came that you might have life and life more abundantly. He preached against going to hell. Not against going to some eternal torture place in this fire. No, no, no. He came to baptize you in fire. <laughs> Even the scripture says that hell will be thrown into the lake of fire. Which means they got their different things. It's just that we weren't taught that in church. I went to church. I was a part of it. I was good. They, they didn't teach it that way. Hell being thrown into the lake of fire. I'll say something taboo and then I'll, leave, I'll save this full topic for another video. And that's that Revelation even says that Satan and the fallen angels will be thrown into the lake of fire. Now do with that information what you will. But I just wanted to present this video as a resource for those of you who want to get kind of like a quick run through guide on this topic of hell. Again, you can go visit Gehenna. The lake of fire is a part of you because you are a temple. The ghetto exists everywhere. <laughs> and the land of the dead is just the land of the dead. All right, y'all. Um... Links for all my stuff is in the description. I'd love to have, uh, I'd love to be able to talk to some of y'all in the Discord server. Um, if you haven't gotten a chance to read my book, the links to all of that is in the description. Join the Facebook group. Um, do have Instagram, all that other stuff. Cave of mystery everywhere. Y'all be blessed.